All right, my lovers, how you doing? Look behind me, eight hovercraft today. We're going out to the British Hovercraft Company and a few of their pals, going mud larking out on the Kent coast. Um, yeah, so what more to say then? Let's get some luck in the muck. Yeah, so here we are. We've got a lovely selection of colours and beautiful drivers. <laughs> I was talking about Ben. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, this one's been out yesterday. I think they went out on the Solent on the Isle of Wight. You can't see that one, it's invisible. Camo one, just didn't get the joke. And a couple more here, a couple of beasts, marlin beasts. And I don't think anybody will be saying out of that one anytime soon. So here's your first find. At first I thought it was just a nice but rather uninteresting Victorian amber bottle, but researching the name on the bottom, Stetton Hills Company, has surfaced some amusing advertisements from 1890. Apparently the mineral water company Stetton is much better than that foreign muck as your waiter suggests, and after trying it you will exclaim, by Jove, a fit for the gods. <laughs> as it turns out they recommend adding brandy or whiskey to it and there's a version for gout. They really do know their target market, posh geezers with gout. And remember, no gentleman's mansion is furnished without Stretton Waters, and no Derby hamper is complete without Stretton Waters. <laughs> Such a cool bygone advert there for a bygone drink. Yeah, so we've uh, landed at the first location, and so uh, let the mudlarking commence. So Heather's going to extract a little bottle that we've just found here. Uh, it's like a nice little cute one. There we go. Yeah. First bottle of the day, or second maybe. That's a cute one. Probably uh, yeah, a little, uh, I would say, it looks to me like a little, I don't know, it would have had probably a little sauce in there or something like that. Probably. But yeah, that's a cute one. Nice little rim. Beauty. Lovely. Small enough to take on the hovercraft without weighing us down too much. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Pottery. How cool is that? Not uncommon to find Roman pottery out here, but there's some lovely pieces. Nice rims, beautiful black burnish ware, third century. 
absolutely amazing stuff. Oh, nice bit of same in where. It was like picking this up, feels like it's brand new. But you can actually see the finger marks there, the, uh, well not finger marks, but lines there drawn in by a Roman potter. Oh, well I've just picked this one up and I've got another piece of decoration on me Roman pottery. How cool is that look? Little squiggle, very uh, modest little decoration there, but that would have been done by the hand of someone living in the Roman era, third century. 1700 years ago someone did that little scribble. How cool is that, eh? So when I pick up these ancient shards of pottery, I often think of my own heritage and what my origins are. So I decided to get a DNA kit from my heritage. They are great value for money and so easy to use and honestly such a fun way to discover your past. So uh, I got the package through from my heritage and it simply required me to swab some saliva and put it back in the prepaid envelope and then just wait. So while I'm waiting for the results to come back, which usually takes about three to four weeks, I thought I'd play around on their website and have a bit of fun with one of my photos, which is of my granddad, old Grampy Fred, when he was enlisted in the Royal Engineers during World War II. And you can enhance and animate the old photos. You know, how cool is that? Nice bit of fun, and my dad loved it when I sent it to him. So I've just got an email back from MyHeritage. Let's see what my ethnicity is. And is any part of me cat or chicken? Right, just one click away from finding out my true ethnicity. This is exciting. Here we go. 90.2% English. Well, that's a strong start. True lion heart. <laughs> Loving the Tudor music as well. Yeah, 7.4% oh, Iberian. Oh, so Spanish and Portuguese. Must be the pirate treasure hunter in me coming through there. <laughs> 1.6% Irish, Scottish and Welsh. Well, I do love Scotland, I love my Scottish gold road trips, so that's where that's coming from, I imagine. And 0.8% Italian. Well, I do love my football and my olives and all that stuff. Wow, and I'm a, you know, a great lover. Mud lover. <laughs> well, that was fun, that was really cool, I loved that. Well, how fun was that, guys? Not only do you get to see your ethnicity makeup but you also can go into the feature on the website and you can see other matches around the world. So you can see your uncles, cousins, fifth cousins, you know, we might even be related, who knows? So get yourself a kit today. All the details in the description below. And if you enter the coupon code SIMON, you'll get free shipping. And as an added bonus, you can start a 30 day free trial of MyHeritage's best subscription for family history research. So you can do your family tree. And after that, you can enjoy another 50% discount if you decide to carry on. Don't hang around, find out what you're made up from today. And if you decide to have a go, make sure you put your results in the comments below. I'd love to read them and see how many different parts of the world you're made up from. Yeah, I think it's fascinating. So share your results in the comments below. Well, that's a nice bit. Oh. Sometimes there is a maker's mark on these. That's a nice bit though, I think I'll take that. Another little bit here, base of something. Do love Samian wear. Maybe we could find one with a, an actual name on, that'd be nice. That's pretty cool. Nice bit of dish there. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Got the snails in there. Mm, give you a eviction notice. <laughs> Lovely. Well, just found this piece, as you can see. And I was talking about Maker's Mark, and I think there might very well be a Maker's Mark on there. Now, this would have been a little pot, a little plate. And in the centre there, I believe that is possibly a little Maker's Mark. That's lovely. It's 
So the reason why we find so many pieces of broken Roman pottery out here is because they were making the pottery out here. Literally they had kilns and uh, they had a great resource of water and they're also using that water to create salt in which to preserve things. But a lot of what we find are wasters, i.e. they either blew up before they were completely firing or maybe they were dropped and or they were fragile and they didn't really uh, come up to scratch. Anyway, we're finding their leftovers, the bits that they didn't really want. But now and again, you'll find either a complete one or at least semi-complete. So we'll keep on looking and see what else we can find. What you got there, Rob? I've got a pipe for sure. Oh, you're right, yeah. <laughs> what you found there, was it, is it a nodule? <laughs> it's a sort of flint nodule you got there. I thought yeah. Sean might like to smoke it. Yeah, I'm not sure we'd be able to get anything no. in that, but it was, you'll give it a good go. And <laughs> lovely, lovely of you to think of it, mate. <laughs> Cheers, Sean. Well, here we have a bit of Samian. Nice piece there. And this one, this one looks like it's decorated. That's really cool. I don't think I've found a piece of decorated before. I know people I've been with have find, found decorated pieces, but yeah, chuffed with that. Little repeated pattern there. Beautiful. This lovely piece of Roman decorated Samian ware probably came from a bowl similar to this one, recreated by Graham Taylor. You can see the decorated segment at the top, which is called the Avolo. Most Samian ware was imported from Western Europe, and they included a maker's mark like the one seen here from an example from the British Museum showing the maker, Macalim. I think my mark may have been the part of a stamp, but it's sadly indecipherable. Although I think I can see an O and an I on it, perhaps? Or maybe it's just wishful thinking. What can you see? Cheers, Benny boy. Cheers, Sight. Good to see you, brother. You too, man. Little pit stop before we carry on. Well, I think I found my first upcycling project of the trip. <laughs> Come look at this. Looks like an old porthole over there. It's a bit deep around here, so I'm going to try and navigate without sinking. Cool, look at that. I'm going in. I've got a foot on there actually, on that rock. Whoa. There we go. It's pretty cool. It's already got a huge chunk of glass in there, look. I reckon that'd be a really cool mirror. What do you reckon, guys? Yeah, I think I can see myself doing that. <laughs> yeah, let's give it a whirl. Well, guys, we've stopped for lunch, so uh, I had a sandwich, so I've just finished and I'll come out here for a quick mudlock. And uh, I found the porthole, right, really good. Nice upcycling project, really happy with that. And I was just getting back to where uh, the others were and realized I dropped my tripod, a little tripod thing that I used to hold my camera up somewhere around here. So I've got to go back and retrace my steps. What a pain in the bum. Anyway, it was worth it because I just found a cod bottle on the way back to finding my tripod, wherever it may be. Still yet to find that, but I'm a mudlarker, so I sort of trust my instincts. Anyway, I found a cod bottle, come and take a look. There he is. And I was just walking, look, following my footsteps back from whence I came, and I went that way. I just saw this down here, right by that traffic cone. <clears throat> there we go, look. Complete cod bottle. Woohoo! Nice. That'll do, that'll do nicely. <laughs> I was hoping to find a cod bottle today, and that's really cool. Sitting born. M. Williams, it looks like. And it's got Windsor and Windsor at the bottom. Oh, chuffed to bits with that. Right, now somewhere out there is my tripod. Don't think I'll find it though, but I'll give it a go. Found it! Yes! 
<laughs> what are you doing over here? You should be with me. <sighs> Good news. If I hadn't gone back for that, I wouldn't have found that cod. Well, I see Rob. He's my wonderful driver for the day. All right, Rob. Very good, man. Come Very here. Very clean along here, isn't it? I know. Well, guess what I've just found? What did you find? Sir? Two things. Yeah? I had to leave him here. I dropped my tripod. So let's go looking for it. I don't know which I prefer. Um, nice, nice cod. Nice, nice. And this old porthole. Porthole? Yeah. Can't beat a porthole. I know, you can't, can you? And also, it's got glass in it. So I reckon I'm going to put a mirror or some of that in, keep the, keep the uh, patina. Yeah, try, try not to slice my fingers off of it in the meantime. <laughs> there we go. Why everyone else is eating lunch, I'm out here mud Thank larking. You. Well done, <laughs> fine. Yeah, man, happy Standing up. The Magnum registered trademark, London Southeast. Beautiful. Well, here we have a nice big bottle, home to many crustaceans. Oh, that's a big one, isn't it? Look at that. Anything on the other side? Probably a big plain one. Yeah. Give it a scratch. Scratch its back. It's a big one though, isn't it? Maybe Ben might like that. Nice that Victorian aqua bottle there. Oh, we have a little Vulcanite stopper. Oh, look at all this glass. Look at them all. All the bottle tops. Amazing. And there's a complete one in there as well. Ooh. Sadly not. It's a nice colour. Look how worn that is. Some might take that just because it's really, really river worn. Lovely and misty. I need to have a little bottle, I'm sure what it is. Oh, that's a cute little thing. And here's your little rim. Don't see many like that. I think I'll leave that for another mud locker though. As cute as it is, if it had a name on, I'd definitely take it, but I can't remember got to carry all this stuff. <laughs> for another time, another mud locker. Maybe someone will pick you up later. Unusual piece of pottery. Never seen anything like that before. Hmm. Lovely big pot. Sort of glazed at the bottom and uh, plain at the top. Not sure on this one. Glazed on the inside as well, so not particularly old, I don't think. Maybe post medieval kind of uh, deal. Beer bottle. Sit on it. That's just plain. Oh, 
Very nice. <laughs> a dunny. A dunny. Well, you do have finds. Oh, look. Little penguin. Is it a penguin? Give it yeah. to Ben. Oh, that's cute. Oh, stop. Stop. Okay, bye. Oh, that's a nice one. It's got a nice pattern on that, isn't it? Yeah, mm. well done. Is that by order of the... Um... Oh, a Roab one? Yeah. Probably not. No, it's not. No, it's just a nice decorated Victorian pipe. Oh, we have a little uh, stopper here. Oh, I shame it's not complete. It's like it's been sliced in half, but it was a very nice uh, um, Prince of Wales feathers sort of idea. Well, this is beautiful. It's a spongeware teacup. Unfortunately, it's got a bit bit of a breakage there, but it could be repaired if someone was inclined. A lot of cement in it, though. As strange as that, it's like someone's used it for mixing. It's pretty cool, though. I'm tempted to take that and repair it. I don't know. Maybe should I? What is that in there, though? That'll never come out. Oh, cool little bottle over there. How cute is that? Yeah, look at that little chip. That could be, that'd be quite cool, submerged in uh, resin. Yeah, I'll take that one. Well, it must be my lucky day. Not only did I lose and find my uh, tripod, but look, I was looking at this bottle, which is a cute little um, aqua Victorian bottle. And uh, right beside that, about a foot away, was this. And if we put it together, oh, how satisfying is that? I don't have to fix it after all. <laughs> well, we've got a lovely find here. Look at that, a lovely pipe. Mark found it and gave it, gave it to Heather, kindly as, it, as that is, just so you're wondering. But yeah, an African man, should we say? That's, that's uh, politically correct, isn't it? They've got a different name, but I dare not say it. But uh, yeah, that's awesome. I've never seen one of these be be been found before, I don't think. Beautiful. Whilst on there, I've seen them come up, but yeah, wicked. Well, you're going to treasure that, aren't you? <laughs> Well, just arrived back at Hovercraft HQ, temporary Hovercraft HQ. Let's see what we found. So this is Heather and Langdon, our beautiful guest for the day, all the way from California. IA. Look at that, I'm a poet, I don't even know it. So uh, they've been out mudlarking with us and they found some amazing things as well. This is everything we found today. What's your favorite finds in here? Um, I think the favorite, my favorite find was this Magnum. Oh yeah, it's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah, lovely. Yeah, they're pretty rare. They're pretty rare. I mean, a lovely green colour as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find that your one of your stoppers will probably go in there. So there we go. We can we can actually have a little complete oh, bottle perfect. There. Yeah. Well, there we go. We'll have to brew some beer for it. That's right. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice little one as well. Got little Holloways. Is it Holloways or Galloway? Let's get in the light. Galloway's chemist there. Nice London bottle. Oh, you found it. What's this little one? You're keeping these ones, keeping, keeping these ones. I never saw these. You're keeping these a secret from me. Oh, that's beautiful. Is that green one? Is that a green one? Probably. That's really cool. Oh, yeah, you can see it's green just in there. Fantastic. And this one, this lovely little pipe, I think this is really cool. Mark found this and uh, generously gave it to uh, Heather and, and or Langdon. Depends who's going to claim it. <laughs> but there's a beautiful bird on there. We don't find very many birds on, so. That's a pretty rare little find, that. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really cool. Victorian as well. And I just made it a bit muddy for you as well. Apologies, that. Talking of pipes, we've got this African pipe as well. You saw that earlier come up. That's really good. Really cool. Little toothpaste there. I think it was called, um, remind myself, Odal. Yeah, little Odal paste there. Quite unusual to be found in a small variety there. What else have we got? Tablespoons, all pork pie ink. Didn't see that come up. Get that one quiet as well. 
<laughs> so as we've been out, we've been walking around and picking loads of bits and bobs up. A little penguin there that um, another guy found. Really nice. Shame it's not complete, but there we go. And Roman corner. Loads of lovely Samian wear. And also you saw these bits come up with the various markings on. And I think, hopefully, one of these ones, that one I think, has got a little maker's mark on. So hopefully we can do a bit of research. If I can get it under the glass and work out if that is a maker's mark or not. And obviously the cod ball which you saw come up, luckily I found that because I went back for my tripod and found that. And I got to upcycle this later. And loads of other little bits and bobs, another pipe. Yeah, we've had a great day, haven't we guys? Yeah, nice little pipe there, probably might be Masonic. Don't know, a bit river worn there, but a nice pictorial, Victorian pipe anyway. Yeah, I'll have to have a look at that and see if there's any uh, mysterious bases that come up when you uh, when you clean it. Yeah, a few little files and, oh, this is quite cool. This is one of the first finds that Langdon had up. It's a poison bottle with the broad arrow on, which we found a few of these in the past. So uh, yeah, military, British military certified bottle there. Um, yeah, lovely little thing. And a few broken ones as well. So I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and an alley gob. There we go, look. What a beautiful little blue alley gob and the usual pipe uh, bottle stoppers as well. I think that's pretty much it. Did you have a good day? <laughs> we had an incredible day. Yes, we did. Wicked. Well, with the proper mud larks, we're going out, finding the history. Thanks very much to Ben as well from the British Hovercraft Company. He's done a great, done a great job in uh, hosting the day for us today. Yes. And sorry, Steve, you can't be here. I hope you're on the mend. We're thinking about you. We know your hip's dodgy and your leg and other parts of your body, which we're going to go into right now. But I hope you're recovering well and get your ass down here and we'll do it all again next time on another mud venture. Yes. Right. See you later, guys. <laughs>Well, here it is gave it a quick scrub and it's really literally scrubbed up well it's beautiful patina on there and the glass is still intact and i want to keep that as a sort of like a nod to its um its history um it would have probably been this side out um a bit of blue paint there probably the color of the vessel when it's painted over i love this side i really do um but i also love this side so it's a bit of a toss up <laughs> literally between which side do I use as the outside um, one. Anyway, as I was just having a look, I've noticed there is some writing on there. Um, it looks like it might say glass, G, I think it's G-L-A-S-S -S -S possibly, and there's another little mark just there. So I don't really want to clean the patina off, but then again, I want to know what that says so I can maybe do some research on it. It's lost a bit of the, um, patina there and it's like a bit of a brassy colour coming through so I may give that a bit of a rub um, but the idea for this is to make a mirror now I've got myself a lovely piece of acrylic glass here and it's not the usual glass it's a gold colour I'm not sure if you can see that quite well rather than it being uh, just a plain old reflective I've gone for a glass one now I was going to cut this out very carefully in the shape of a circle but just discovered I could probably just stick it straight on the back like that and save myself a whole heap of time uh, and even maybe put a little hook as well in there glue a hook on or something like that or maybe use the screw holes don't know yet but rather than sit there for hours and cut this out perfectly because I did want it to slot into this little recess there I'm just thinking is it worth it oh it's getting a bit windy out here <laughs> Um, yeah, is it worth it because um, it's just going to take ages to get it perfect anyway so I think I'm just going to dot and dab it and stick it on there and that's that's job done really why make more work for yourself I say when you can get just as good as effect um, spending half the time but with that time I'm going to use to, to uh, clean up that little um, that little maker's mark there and hopefully together we can identify where it came from I'm going to give it a light brush with uh, um, a wire brush. We can see that it actually has got the word half. Half glass. Half glass. 
Hmm. Any uh, maritime experts know what that might mean? Is it um, half glass? I don't know, is it the size of it? Is it half glass size? Who knows? Pretty cool though. I'm glad I uh, cleaned that up just to see what that was. So, I just, and I've just cleaned that top half there a bit, so it's got a bit of a bit of a balance about it. So I love it, I really do. I think it's fantastic. What a find! Imagine the things this has seen and people have looked out on all the waves going past it and how it ended up blown off its boat. If anybody does know what this is from as well, um, anybody got a good good idea of age? Uh, yeah, feel free to comment below. It's going to use a bit of lacquer as well, just to keep the paint from coming off and to make those colours pop a bit more. Thanks for watching mud lovers, please click this thumb now now to see more extreme mudlarking on hog crafts and I'll see you on the next mud venture.